Hey Guam and welcome to KOM News Extra. I'm Sonia Artero. We'll continue our series tonight on paying tribute to those who strive to help heal those victimized by crime. For this segment, we'll highlight the work of the criminal investigation section of the Guam Police Department, a department on the front line in the fight against all types of family violence and abuse. The fact is they are the first to reach a victim and therefore are the first to counsel them about victim services. Special, Special Agent John Perez has been with the Guam Police Department for nearly a decade and has lectured about family violence and sex crimes as well as training new officers on the topic. He is joined by the supervisor of the Victims Assistance Unit at GPD, Mr. Joseph Bamba. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you for having us. It's our pleasure to have you here. Now tell us about the family violence law the police officers adhere to. Okay. First of all, it's a 1994 law that was enacted in 1994, Public Law 22-160. And what it did was it defined family violence and also gave the penalties for violating that law. Now, does the family violence law apply to ex-spouses? Yes, it does. As a matter of fact, it applies to all members of the family to include ex-spouses, ex-girlfriends, ex-dated partners, whatever. Okay, And it also includes children of any person who is listed in the law. Now, what happens when a police officer responds to a resident alleged to have committed an act of family violence? Take us through the steps so that we can better understand and appreciate how your day is day in and day out. Well, uh, like any call that the Guam police receives, um, the officer first investigates if a crime, uh, what's going on, if a crime has been committed or not. Um, if it's been determined that family violence is an issue, then the uh, officer has to determine whether or not there's a primary aggressor um, in the situation. Uh, it varies from situation to situation, uh, which is why uh, the officers of the Guam Police Department undergo yearly training on, uh, on how to handle these situations. Now, what happens when the actual aggressor is arrested? Take us through that step. Um, if it's been determined that there is a primary aggressor, then under the 1998 version of the Guam Family Violence Act, uh, the Guam police no longer has discretion as to whether or not to arrest the um, offender. Uh, it's mandated that there is a pro-arrest and pro-confinement policy where the offender has to be confined at the, with the Department of Corrections until they either see uh, the magistrate at, within 24 hours or um, their well, released, released by the Attorney General. Incidentally, the Attorney General's office is the only entity that can release a suspect before the magistrate's hearing. Exactly what kind of services do you provide victims of family violence? Okay, I can answer that. First of all, when our patrol officers respond to the scene, if they determine that the victim needs services, they will contact our office, whether it be day or night, Okay. They will respond to the scene if need be, and we will conduct a, uh, an assessment and determine exactly what the victim needs. If they need transporta uh, transporting from the scene to a shelter, we shall do that also. What are some of the challenges that face you when responding to these crimes? Uh, I'd have to say that the biggest challenge is culture. Um, with a lot of the migrant population of Guam coming in, uh, they're not well versed on Guam's fi uh, family violence law, which, by the way, is one of the strictest and one of the most stringent laws which focus on the victim's rights. Give us an example of what you just pointed out. Uh, say you're called to the scene of um, a Palauan's house and there's, there's domestic violence. A lot of times you're faced with having to explain the laws, explain the, the difficulties that face you when you arrive on the scene. Uh, well, in the past it was obviously language, but a couple of the service organizations in the past have gotten together and have translated what the victim's rights are, uh, as well as your Miranda rights for the different uh, migrant cultures, such as um, those from the FSM, from Palau, uh, Chinese, Japanese, uh, and am I missing any more here? Oh, we're, we're, pretty, we're pretty much Koreans also. Oh, <laughs> Korean so you literally is. carry around like a cheat sheet, if you will, to provide them so that they better understand their rights. Well, 
Okay, well, that's that's true. However, uh, I hate to say this, but it's still in the works due to funding. We are not able to provide that service at this time. So we, we went a step further and we, we have police officers in the department who are of Korean, Chinese, Palawan, Chukis, ancestry. So we call on these individuals to help us translate. 